we give you all glory and all adoration. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. Generations will come and go. But you are God that remains the same. Receive all exaltation and honor. Receive all glory. Receive all power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The word for us today is God is a spirit. And we, when we understand that, we know that we are not dealing with a person. We are dealing with a spirit. And we have to understand that he's, he's going to continue to be in the spirit with us. And that is what makes all the sense. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is a spirit and whatever we do has to happen with him in the spirit for us to get the maximum of what God wants us to have. I just want you to thank him this hour. Bless him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefit. Give him glory and adoration. If you are connected on Facebook, can you just share this on your walls? Invite your friends and families. Let's have a, a great time in the presence of God. The Bible says in his presence, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. Have your way, O oh Lord, have your way, Father that your name will be glorified. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you. We adore you. We exalt you on this faithful day. We thank you for life, for healing, for prosperity, for advancement. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be adored. Let your name be worshipped. The Bible says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. Deliver us today. Make a name for yourself in our lives, in our families. Can we share this everywhere we are? Share it to your friends and families. Today we are going to pray. We are going to pray and we will pray and something will happen. The Bible says pray until something happens. Something great will begin to happen in your life when you pray. Blessed be thy holy name. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Be thou magnified. Be thou glorified for what you are doing and what you continue to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Plead the blood upon your life right now. Let the blood begin to speak for us. Let the blood speak life. Let it speak transformation. Let the blood speak power. Let the blood speak advancement. Let the blood speak health. I plead the blood upon my business, ministry, job, finances, your marriages. Let the blood of Jesus continue to speak there. Today we are going to pray with the altar of God. The, the Bible says God is a spirit in John chapter 4 verse 24. And they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. If God is a spirit, so everything about God has to be geared towards the spirit. Sometimes we do the physical thing, we come to God with emotions, we come and we cry. Yeah, we God sees our cry, but he's not moved by that. God is moved by his word. I told us last time, I think last week, that God is not committed to the word that we speak to him. He is committed to his word to perfect. So every time God wants to do something, he has to go in accordance with his own will. By his will, he does things. Once his will is in it, then it is right. The Bible says we pray and we don't receive the result because we pray amiss. We pray not in according to the will of God. Once is the will of God, the Bible says there are many plans, there are many counsels in the heart of a man, but the will of God shall stand. His will is his supremacy. His word is everything to him. That's why he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot of my word shall be dragged to the mud. The word of God must be fulfilled in your life today. Every word that God has spoken concerning you, begin to receive them now. Receive them by the power and the authority. Receive them in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are now, receive the word. The word shall become life and light for you. The word shall become power. The word shall become everything for you. If you can find a word that speaks to your situation, hold on to that word until the word becomes flesh in you. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwell among them. Let that word, if you say you are, you are looking for healing and you have found 
to the word where the Bible says, by the stripe of Jesus, we are healed. You hold on to that word until healing becomes something that you have received, that you begin to walk in divine health. That's what I'm talking about. The word is not just a word. We can say words and we don't even have anything to enforce them and make them to come to pass. But when it's the word of God, it must co come to pass. His word can never come to him forward. It must accomplish what has, it has been sent to do. Whatever it is sent to accomplish, it must accomplish it. Hallelujah. By the power and the authority. Oh, I just want us to begin to understand what we are doing is a spiritual thing. And some people say, oh, I'm not a spiritual person. No, you have to be. Many people carry religious spirits, all the activities and dogmas and doctrines that we have created as men. It doesn't change who God is. The woman of the, of the well, we are going to talk about her in a minute now. Because I want us to focus there so we can be able to understand what Jesus meant but when he said God is a spirit. Appreciate him. Glorify him. Father, we bless you. We worship you. We glorify you. We adore you. We magnify you for who you are. We glorify you for you are God all by yourself. We take authority over this vicinity. We take authority over the proximity. We take authority over the highways and the byways the freeways and the corner street, the expressways. Lord, may you be God in all that we do. Show yourself mighty in us. Become supreme in our life. Let the power of God be manifested in everything that we do. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father. Have your way that your name will be glorified. You are God all by yourself. There is none like you. Thank you, Jesus for life. Everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice today, Lord, I stand with them in the spirit and I pray that they receive divine health. Let them begin to walk in health. Not any health, but divine health. The power of God shall be visible. We thank you for we know that you have done it again. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad to be part of it. Lord, show yourself mighty, show yourself great, show yourself again in our families. As you are listening to me right now, let the presence of God come upon you. The Bible says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Psalm 16 verse 11. And in the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. Begin to receive the pleasure of God right now. By the power and the authority in the name of Jesus. Rebo go sokoto bo li kataraba li kanamamama. Mago dorobo roko to shekete bababa. Oh, yes, Lord. Have your way, oh, Lord. Have your way, Father. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The word is life, but God is a spirit. If the word is a spirit and God is a spirit, then we must have both. The Bible says, John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, The word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. That word that you have, the word you have is a prosperity. The Bible says, I wish above all things that thou shalt prosper. Third John verse 2, be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So when you say, oh, wow, the word says, I shall prosper. That word prosperity, you hold on to the word until it becomes life. It, it's not just written in the book somewhere. It begins to manifest in your life. Because the word is spirit and the, there's, the, there's life in that word also. The Bible says, be in hell. So if you are sick in the body, the Lord said that I should be in health. I receive health now from the crowns of my head to the soles of my foot right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you continue until you see that you have been healed. The Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. It, 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 the word has to be real to you. It has to be real until it becomes real. Sometimes, you know, serving and worshiping and following God to the fullness becomes a challenge. A lot of people will say, well, I believe God, but I, I don't really know if this God thing is. So the, the, while they are waiting on God, they are having another option. They are looking around, looking for somewhere to anchor and saying, God, if you don't show up by this time, I, I think I'm just going to do this. But let me tell you something. You can't threaten God. Who are you to threaten him? 
Whether we believe God or not, God is still God. Whether God answers us or not, God will still be God. So if we know that out of the door, then we don't have to put conditions with God. You just come to God with your free heart and believe him absolutely. The Bible said, Jesus said to the man, Mark chapter 9, verse 23, if thou can believe, all things are possible to them that believe it. Just believe him. And let your belief system begin to grow to the place where you begin to have faith. When your faith grows, it becomes like a mountain. The Bible says, if you have a little faith like a monster seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed and be thrown out to yonder. You relocate mountains, relocate things in your life. Say, get out of my life and they will go because you have faith. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. And he that must come to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Everything we have said now is, has to do with the spirit. Not, has nothing to do with the flesh. You know, the Bible says the spirit is what it is. The flesh profits nothing. So I don't want us to dwell in the flesh. If you look at Romans chapter 8 verse 1, it says um, that they that walk in flesh shall reap corruption, but they that walk in the spirit shall reap eternal life. He said there is no condemnation. Therefore, now to them that are in Christ Jesus. So if you come into Christ, you see both flesh and spirit. What is to see this flesh is carnality. Judging things with your five senses, with what you can see, what you can touch, what you can feel, which is not a bad thing. We start from the flesh, we migrate into the spirit. That's why prayers are made with understanding and prayer is also made in the spirit. You can start in the flesh, it's good, but don't end up in the flesh. Make sure you locate the place of the spirit. That is where you have things done. You settle matters in the spirit, they are settled in the physical. If you go and... You, um, get receive blessings in the spirit the blessings manifest in the physical the spirit controls the physical if that is the right word but that's what i want to say god is a spirit we bless you lord we glorify we adore you we give you all exaltation and honor have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. Yes, the Bible said the entrance of the word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to go to the book of John chapter 4. I just made a reference of the woman that was at the well and that was the woman that Jesus told clearly. Say, look, the woman was trying to bring physical things to tie to, to spiritual things. Jesus was trying to un make her understand that you have to separate them. If you look from verse 4, John chapter 4 from verse 4, the Bible said, and he must need to go through Samaria. He must. This is a must. Now, this, this, Jesus had begun his ministry for a while, but why must he go through Samaria? The Samaritans have been marginalized forever. As long as the Jews have had history, every Samaritan is considered to be less than a normal Jew. So Jesus needs to go. The Bible says he must need to go through Samaria. In verse 5, I'm going to read it, you know, jump here and there. We are going to get to 24. That's the whole story. But I just want to pick here. And so you can say from verse 4 to 24. So the Bible says he... Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is in Sica, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. The Bible said, now Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus at the well, and it was about the sixth hour, which is 12 noon. Nobody goes to the stream by 12, by 12 noon. People that are serious are in the their business places, their marketplaces, people are in offices working. So 12 noon is kind of a time of evangelism when you, you know, understand the hour of prayer, but it's a time like lunch in businesses. People don't really go to the stream or go to the well at that time. But Jesus had a woman in mind. He already saw that woman. He knew who she was. He came there for her. The Bible says in verse 7, 
Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus sat unto, said unto her, give me to drink. And the discussion began from there. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Jesus have sent the disciples, all of them. So you see, it was, a, it was a, an orchestrated thing. He planned it very well. He knew that that woman was the gate. You know, sometimes you can look at yourself as insignificant, but you are a gate to your community. Some of you are gates to your family. Many of you are gates to a city. That woman was in the physical. She was nobody, but she was the door of Samaria. With that, with that woman, God can take over the whole Samaria. The Bible says, then come at a woman, Samaritan woman to draw water. Jesus said unto her. That was how the discussion started. In the flesh. So I want you to see that the flesh is not all bad. You can start in the flesh, but end up in the spirit. He said, give me to drink. For his disciples have gone to the city to buy meat. Verse 9, the Bible said, then said the woman of Samaria unto him, unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God, and who is it that said unto thee, give me to drink? Thou could have asked of him, and he would give you the living water. You know, how can this be possible? Somebody is telling you, give me something. Now he turned around and flipped it and said, if you know who is talking to you, you can say, you just say to that person, give me the living water. And you know, women like mystery. Jesus was trying to put her in that place where she will now see him as a mysterious person. And the woman said unto him, sir, thou had nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then had thou the living water? Where did you have that living water you are talking about? You don't even have a water bottle. You don't have a cup. You don't have nothing to get water from. But I want you to follow this discussion very well. In verse 13, and Jesus answered and said unto her, He said, Art thou greater than our father? The woman was saying in verse 12. Are you greater than our father, Jacob? which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. And Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall test again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never test. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him as a well, as a water springing up into everlasting life. So Jesus is saying, the water I have for you is not just any water. It shall be something that will be like a fountain, a spring water that is going to spring into everlasting life. Now the, 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 the discussion has gone nuclear in the spirit. This discussion has migrated into somewhere that the woman could not understand anymore. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I test not, neither come here to draw. I don't want to be here every day drawing. She was tired of people. She just vented her frustration. And Jesus looked at her and said to her, go call thy husband and come hither. Verse 16. And that's where the woman came back to the flesh and tried to present herself as a single lady so that he can pick him up, pick her up. And Jesus, the woman said unto, unto him, I have no husband. I have no husband. Do you know what it means? This woman has been married almost half of her life. She has been married husbands. And she's here telling Jesus Christ that she has no husband. She has been so beaten up by men that she doesn't know what she believes anymore. And Jesus said unto her, thou have well said, I have no husband. But let me tell you something that you have not so told me. And Jesus went further in verse 18. For thou had five husbands, and he whom you thou have now is not thy husband. Is that said thou truly? He's telling the, the woman, am I saying the truth? And the woman said to him, sir, I perceive. The moment you receive God, your eyes will open. Bible said in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When, G when Jesus was talking to the man in that same John chapter 3, Nicodemus, 
So if you accept a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When this woman, Jesus said to her, you have been married five times. Number six is not your husband. Her eyes was open. I perceive, she began to see better. I perceive that thou art a prophet. Verse 20, he said, our fathers worship in the mountain. She now took it to church. She brought the religious spirit immediately because now they have begun to talk in the level of her understanding. She brought it to the church. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And you said, Jesus never talked to her about where to worship, but she's trying to lump Jesus into all the Jewish thing. And you say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, well, I'm not going to be in that politics. Let me tell you the truth. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what you, what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Say, but the hour cometh. And now is, verse 23, so the hour is not tomorrow. Now is that hour where the true worshipers shall worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is desperate to find a man that will worship him in spirit and in truth. But in verse 24, that's where we, we kind of took the word, God is a spirit. And Jesus gave her the famous word, God is a spirit. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So it's not a negotiable thing. Jesus did not put an open door, say, you know, if you don't want to worship in spirit, there's another way. No. He said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must must, M-U-S-T, must worship him in spirit and in truth. There is no, there's no level ground. There's no in between. There's no other plane. God is a spirit. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah, she brought another religious talk. The Jews have been waiting for the Messiah forever. The Messiah was there. They didn't know. He said, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her in verse 26, I that speak unto thee, am, am he. That Messiah you have been waiting for, this is the Messiah standing in front of you. And that breaks everything. The Bible says she ran to the city and she called the people. She left her, her water bottle pot and said, come and see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And people began to come. Today, God is calling you today. We still have this discussion in our minds every day. Jesus is still roaming around, going to places of worship and places of fellowship, going to the mall. Jesus is sitting by the well at the street corner on the box stop. You have heard Christ talk to you in this way and in this manner. But how many of us are going to come to Jesus today? He's still walking around, calling people. God is a spirit. And they that must worship, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Everything about God is spiritual. It's okay to start in the flesh, but make sure you are migrating to the spirit. Because that is where you have to get the fullness of God. Oh, labaga shikata bababa. Makotoro borika na mashika tabababa. Lebaga sika tabarika na mashiko to bobobo. Rakida malaka tasiko to bobo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for who you are, who you represent. The woman that Jesus met at the well, the Samaritan, we don't even know her name up till date. God bless her, whoever she was. She kind of helped us to have a mirror because she was asking the right questions. Some people could have just seen Jesus in the excitement of his discussion with him, all the 
physical things that make him up. She could have just fall under the anointing and she will not get anything out of Christ. She was a good prosecutor, if I can put it that way. Because of her experiences with men, she asks all the right questions. She makes sure she checks all the box. If I have to have another man in my life, I must know all these things. I must know ABC. And while she was doing that, she was being healed. Because after Jesus, she quit looking for men. Jesus was the seventh man in her life. She has had five husbands. Number six was not her husband. Jesus was not her husband, but Jesus was number seven. And she stopped looking for men. She was made whole. Today, I don't know what you have been looking for. Jesus is there. If you can leech onto him, you will quit looking for. Everything we will become is already in the hand of God. It has already been created. God is not going to create something tomorrow. The Bible says on the sixth day, he finished and he rested. God has been resting since then, up till now. The car you will drive tomorrow is already there. The house you will leave is already in the spirit. But you have to migrate into the spirit. And in the spirit, there are levels. There are dimensions with God. The higher you go, the easier it becomes to access things. I was telling you that we don't own anything here. We access them based on the level of grace and ability that we have. Because the Bible says he gave them according to their several abilities in Matthew 25. Everyone that has talent, their talent is based on their ability. So if you have small ability, God will give you small things. As your capacity begins to increase, he will increase what he has given you. So many of us, we come because of healing. We come because of we don't have a job. It's okay to come for all those things. But God is more than a job. God is more than healing you. God is more than all that. God should be worshipped forever. The right word is just serve him. He said to Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. Exodus chapter 8 verse 1. Exodus chapter 9 verse 1. Continue the same thing. Let my people go that they might serve me. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they might serve. The condition to be free is to serve God. That woman was in bondage. If she has, if Jesus was not the Christ, she could have cornered him and married him again and she would still be looking for another man. Because the man she was looking for does not exist. She has this imaginary man she has in her mind, the perfect man. That man is not existing anywhere. So the more she meet men, the more she get confused in the kind of man she wants. But when she met Christ, she was made whole. That's, that's also the same thing with be, having the quest for resources. Solomon said, it's vanity upon vanity. When you have a thousand dollars, oh, you want a million dollars. Meet people with the milk, they say they are poor. So people have more than 10 million, 20 million, they don't consider themselves that they have attained anything. They are busy chasing resources. It's like chasing the wind. That's what Solomon said. The more you get, the more you feel that you don't have enough. So it's a wind. But the moment you meet God, there is nothing that is above him. Every other thing will be nothing to you. If God blesses you so much, you use that blessings to bless the kingdom also. The Bible said to, mo to whom much is given, much is expected. And God told Abraham, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. So Abraham never saw resources as a thing. He saw it as something that solved problem. The more God blesses him, he uses it to solve problem. Put money in its place. Money has to be something that you use to solve problem. Money is never a master. It can never be a master. If you make him your master, then you serve him for the rest of your life. And he will never let you down. The devil has a way of putting people down. If you let him, he will keep you there forever. But when you see money as something that can help you to solve problem, then you, you are okay. And some people, healing is a big thing to you. Jesus is saying, it's a children's bread. If you look at the woman that came to Jesus Christ, Jesus said, look, I can't take what belongs to the children and give to dogs. And the woman said, well, even dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the table. And Jesus said, wow, 
I didn't know you have such level of understanding. You got it. And immediately, she received the healing for her daughter. He said, oh, woman, great is thy faith. That's what Jesus said. Great is thy faith. What about the woman that was bent over for 18 years? In Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 14. The Bible says, as Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day, that was when they started to say, oh, why can he, why should he heal on the Sabbath day? In verse 11, he said, behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift up her head. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. And he laid his hand on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And that was when the rulers of the synagogue said, what? God said we should not walk on Sabbath day and you have been walking. You, can, you cannot heal somebody on the Sabbath. What kind of doctrine and dogma is that? A woman that was bent for 18 years, they want her to remain that way. This is the church now. The religious people. They say you can't do anything on on the Sabbath day, you, can, you have only six days to walk. On the Sabbath day is holy. And Jesus said, I am the Lord of Sabbath. The Son of God is the Lord of Sabbath. I am Sabbath. The church you are coming to is me. But they didn't know. That angered them the more. They began to plan to do evil to him. But before they, they got to him, Jesus was already gone. So I don't know what you have, what have held you bound today. You are loose from it. Whether you are a woman or a man. Thou art loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let God begin to move into you. And you see how easy it was when she was loosed. There was no ceremony. I see today when people get healed, the video will be played 20,000 times in church. Look, the, the Bible call it children's bread. Children's bread. Ah, la, ba, ba, ba. Magodoro. We have to get to the things that are higher. We have to go to great things. Paul said, let's get out from foundational things and begin to think higher. You know that even laying of hands is a part of the foundations. It's not the major thing. Baptism. Resurrection from dead works. Salvation. Paul said, these are all these are just foundations. If we understand that those things are foundations, we have to chase the higher calling. I want you to see Hebrews chapter 6. By the grace of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Hebrews chapter 6. The word said here in verse, in verse 1, it said, therefore, even the principle of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto the perfection. That's where we should be going as Christians. Let's go to big things, not small things. And he told us the little things that we hold on to. And many of these things are good. We don't have to neglect them. He said, not laying again the foundation. So there are foundational things of repentance. So repentance is one of them is foundation from dead works and of faith towards God. That is foundation. Believing God is foundation. Number two, and verse two, of the doctrine of baptism. Those are foundations and laying of hands. Many times when people say, oh, he laid hand on me. They are jumping at that. Is, this is for children. Every child of God should be laying hand. The, if you receive Christ today, you can lay a hand upon the sick. The Bible said, this sign shall follow them that believe. Matthew chapter six, um, Mark chapter 16, verse 17. It, the signs does not follow pastors. It follow believers. So laying of hand is one of the foundation and resurrection from the dead and eternal judgment. Say, so let's leave all the foundations and go to things that are greater. That's why I say, God is a spirit. We have to stay in the spiritual part of God. Get to the higher place. Jesus said in John chapter 3 verse 31, and he that cometh from above is above all. We have to get to the place where we are far above all principalities and powers. Seated in heavenly places with Christ. Hallelujah. That's where we have to stay. You don't even see the devil when you are operating in that dimension. God is a spirit. 
they that must worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. That is where God will begin to make sense. Why we are still struggling with understanding his dimensions because we want to stay on physical things. I told you that it is okay to start there, but never you end up there. God wants us to migrate. The migration, let it not be something that is hard for you to do. Just move up. By the power and the authority. Look at what he said in Romans chapter 8. I, I've mentioned it before. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So in Christ, you can come into the, the kingdom and see two groups of people, those that walk in the flesh. When somebody is walking in the flesh, many times they are not unbelievers because they have to be a believer to understand that this is flesh. If you have not believed, you are still out there. The Bible says there is now, therefore, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. But the people that are not condemned are the ones that will walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the moment you begin to walk after the spirit, you are above law, any law. You are above gravity. You are up there. In verse 2, we say, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us what? Free from the law of sin and death. When sin and sin is found, there will be death and there is law, there is cap. That's why Jesus told the Jews in John chapter 8. He said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Verse 32, and they say, what? What is he saying? We are not bound. They were jumping up and trying to condemn him for using the word the truth shall make you free. They say, we are never bound. What is he saying? Why will this guy come and speak heresy here? And Jesus told them, look, you are not free yet until I say so. And that I like that discussion. It's very, very interesting how Jesus shut them up. Look at John chapter 8. Holy Bogo Shakata Baba. In verse 32, Jesus began to build the story from verse 30 when he preached to the Jews. And the Bible says, and he spoke the word in verse 30. Many believed on him. So they were believers now. These are not unbelievers. They were not some people out there in the street that doesn't know God. And in verse 31, the Bible says, Jesus said to those Jews, we believe on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. So he said, don't stop in believing me. Just go for that. Continue. Become a disciple. Walk in the kingdom. Serve me. And in verse 32, he said, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The truth does not set you free. He said, it makes you because you know it. And in verse 33, they say, and they answered and said, we be Abraham's seed. We are children of Abraham. And we were never in bondage. Like I was telling the pastor, I said, go and pray, ask for mercy. Say, ah, I've been a pastor since I don't need mercy. I say, you need mercy every day. I still pray for mercy. So they say, we are not, we don't, we are not in bondage. We are children of Abraham. How say it thou? What audacity? What gave you the infantry? What gave you the, the, the audacity to say we are in bondage? What gave you the power to say you shall be made free? They were angry. And Jesus answered in verse 34. Verily I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth. And in verse 36, he gave them the famous word. If the son, therefore, if I, the son, therefore makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because your word had no place in you. So Jesus chastised them. Right there, these are people that were planning evil in their heart and they were trying to appear righteous. They were appearing as Christians People that are born with God, maybe they were speaking in tongues. They are tongue speakers. They, they know how to give offering. They know all the religious rites and activities and the doctrines and the dogmas. It has nothing to do with that. God is a spirit. They that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to pray. We are going to pray against altar. Some of these things are 
based on where we were coming from. They have territorial authorities that we want to thwart what we have believed. So we are going to come against some altars in our life. Every territorial evil altar over my life and destiny, let fire come upon them now in the name of Jesus. Catch fire by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus. Every territorial, we are talking about principalities. Territorial authorities are over, pres, over every territory. Principalities, they are over territory. Territorial powers, we rebuke you. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And having done all to stand, the Bible says, continue to stand. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darknesses of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Lobaga shakataba, every territorial altar over my life, over my destiny, catch fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, every evil altar that knows my past, present and future, I erase my information from your memory right now. In the name of Jesus, every evil altar that knows my past, my present, and my future, I begin to erase my information. I erase my life, family life, every familiar spirit, witches and wizards. We erase it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lebrogo sakatababa, magida rabalika na mashokotobobobo. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We erase it. We erase it. We erase it. We erase it now from the memory of their, 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 their buffer, of whatever memory they have. We erase everything that has to do with us by fire, by force. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Number three, every evil altar of backwardness in my life, in my family, that have set generations backward today let fire consume them and we begin to receive restoration restoration in my family restoration in my life restoration lord restore me every evil altar of backwardness let the fire of god destroy it i receive restoration for myself the bible says joel chapter 225 and i will restore to you the years that the canker worms and the palmers have eaten up I will restore unto you. God told a, a man of God, a, a king, Hezekiah, Isaiah 38. And God told the prophet Isaiah, say, go tell this man, I've added 15 more years. Today, restoration begins to happen in your life. Every spirit of backwardness, we cancel you and we receive restoration. Because in deliverance, when you are delivered from something, you cannot be left in a vacuum. You must be delivered into. So you, if you're coming out from backwardness you begin to move forward exodus 14 the bible said god told to moses say tell the children of israel it is time for them to move forward verse 15 so you are moving forward no more backwardness forward ever backward never in your life in the name of jesus christ number four evil altars of constant failure raised against me i pull you down by fire in the name of Jesus, whatever altar negatively that somebody, maybe a pastor even, because there are some evil pastors out there, prophets, evil people that have raised an altar speaking against you. Today, we destroy it, we pull it down. The Bible says, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Begin to pull them down. We begin to pull them down. We pull them down. Akorobo sakata ba 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 ba. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them begin to catch fire. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Number five, every altar of sorrow. You know, there are about four altars that people make. There's one is called effigy. Effigy is they take a representative of somebody and say, this is that person. And they make an image. Sometimes it's a candle that is a male. Sometimes you see husband and wife that things are going well. They go buy a male candle, a female candle, and tie them together and begin to afflict them. Cut off their head and the man will be feeling neck pain. Put a pin on the woman by the side. She will be running from hospital to hospital. Today we come against every effigy in any altar that is carrying your name, carrying the name of your family. And there's another one called a crystal ball. They look at it, they see 
your activities like a monitoring spirit. Every crystal ball, let the fire of the Holy Ghost destroy it. There's one called the name altar. They take a name of a person and put it in a box and put it in an altar. And they pray every time they mention your name and say negative things. They cast as passion into your life. Today, we come against every name altar. There's another one called box altar. Some people are put it in a coffin. They make a coffin, small coffin. Take a candle that is molded like a person and put it in that, inside that coffin and put it somewhere. And they begin to cast the spirit of death upon the person. After a while, the person will be buried. Today, every box altar, lebaga shikatababa, evil altars of backwardness, every evil altar of failure, every evil altar of sorrow, lebaga shikatababa, evil altar that swallows wealth. Today, we cast you out. We destroy you. Every evil altar that have carried your resources and the them by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, I'm a sick at Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We have limited time, but I want to pray a little bit today. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to raise, rise up in you today. Anointing begin to flow inside of you. The Bible says, anointing destroys you. Isaiah chapter 10, 27. And the you shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I say his burden shall be lifted off your shoulder. Every burden of the enemy, today let it be lifted up. The burden of the enemy right now begin to lift up your shoulder. Every enemy burden, burden that the devil has cast upon you and you have been carrying it shall come to pass in that day which is today. That his burden shall be lifted off your shoulder and the yoke shall be destroyed. And because of the anointing, today every yoke in your life be destroyed by fire by force because of the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Rebo go soko tobo rikatara baba ba, makatara bali kadama shiko tobo, lebro go soko tobo yikatara baba ba. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. There are people that have monthly sicknesses and diseases. Every month or every two months, three months, some people they are seasonal sicknesses. In fact, there was a woman I met in South Africa. On her birthday, every birthday, as she can remember, as long as she has been an adult, something terrible will happen to her. When she became a, a woman, two of her boyfriends, one died on her birthday. She, he was coming to pick her up and he had an accident. His head was cut off. The other one was locked up, framed and locked up for almost five years on her birthday. So when I met her, when her birthday is coming, she will lock herself up. She don't come out. She don't tell anybody. She hide. She tell her children not to even send her greetings because it's an evil day for her. She didn't know where it came from. And we began to talk. And her birthday was coming. She was afraid. She said, Pastor, I said, we are going to celebrate it. And we did. And nothing happened. But I said, that spirit will visit you. And we will pray. We did deliverance on her after her birthday. That, that demon came. We were there. She said, he has come. The man will walk through the wall and come into her tall white man. You can't even see her. I was there. I didn't see the person, but she was telling me he's here. Before I know it, somebody grabbed my, my shirt and tied me, almost killed me that night. It was a battle. And I was seeing the woman holding me. I couldn't remove her hand from me. At the time, I stopped looking at her and we began to pray. Pray. I prayed in the spirit like I never prayed before. When I opened my eyes, she was almost dead. I was afraid that I would be locked up. But after a while, she got up. She was saying, where is he? Where is he? The last thing I was heard, hearing her saying, you cannot help me. You cannot help me. I said, no, God can help you. I can't help you, but God can help you. And she almost killed me. I didn't know I was wearing a tie. I was still very young then in ministry. You know, you don't do such deliverance with tie at all. They will kill you. The devil will strangle you to death. God saved me from the hand of the, that demon. But that day, that man left and never came back. I prayed, I said, it's appointed to a man to die, but once after death is judgment. Hebrews chapter 9, 27, every spirit of death coming upon you today, go. Get out and never come back. By the power and the authority, in the name of Jesus, that was when I started to feel the hand releasing me. I was feeling free. I didn't know she has fell down on her living room. The whole house was torn like a war zone. Her Things were broken everywhere. I didn't know when all those things happened. She broke all the vases, the glasses, the pictures while we were struggling in that living room. So she woke up. That was it. Today, I don't care what the devil has done. Whether it's a monthly sickness or disease or affliction, 
that comes in a season. Some people, they don't like summer because every summer is terrible for them. Some people don't like winter. It's a seasonal thing. God is going to destroy that altar. Wherever they are invoking those powers from, I speak to you according to the book of Psalm 121. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. We take over time. The sun controls the day. Everything that is programmed in the sun, whether it's five years from now, two years from now, six months, three months, one week from now, it, it shall not come to pass. If they are programmed in the night, the moon will say, not on my watch. We cancel it today by the fire and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God will begin to grant you favor. Hallelujah. Because of our time, I just want us to appreciate God. God will begin to lift you up. Hallelujah. By the power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are altars and covers holding the keys of my success, of your success and breakthroughs. Release them now. Every altar that is holding the keys of your success. The devil cannot become you. They cannot take what belongs to you. They can, they can delay you. Remember in Psalm 24, Jesus went into the grave in verse 7. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up you everlasting doors. There were people destiny that were held there until Jesus went there and released them. Every destiny that have been held in covers, held in chains, held in the spirit, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. We break every covenant. We break every covenant of the enemy. We invoke the mystery of the blood. Let fire come upon them right now. The Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. And they loved not their life unto death. Thank you, Jesus. For the blood of Jesus shall speak for us better things today. It shall speak prosperity. It shall speak love. It shall speak advancement. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Oh God, arise and lift me over evil bondages lift me over evil bondages prevent me from from pre prevent me from pre pre prevent them from achieving their goals in my life every evil bondage that is holding you back let god prevent them from achieving their goal the bible say that the devices of he frustrates all their devices that their enterprise cannot be achieved every devices of the enemy we are not ignorant of it we cancel them from their root we break them. Labogo shakata ba ba ba. Makita raba liko no mosakata ba. Ali bogo soko to bo rikata raba lika na mashiko to bo. Bragodoro bolo koto sekete ba ba ba. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Any battle in your life that has refused to let go, I command them to perish now. You are free. I say you are free. Today, every man that will look upon you, every woman that will look upon you, whether they are spirits or they are humans, as you obtain favor, they will help you. The Bible says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of everyone that looked upon her. Esther chapter 2 verse 15. People began to favor her. Today, men shall favor you. Women shall favor you. Even the devil will work for you because you carry favor. You see how the devil complained about Job in Job chapter 1. The Bible said the devil complained that God had blessed Job so much and he can't even touch him. In verse 10, the Bible says, Has thou not made a hedge about him? Let the Lord make a hedge about you. And about his house, there shall be a hedge, a fire around your house. And about all that he has on every side, you have blessed the work of his hands, and his substance has increased in the land. That is your portion. There will be a divine protection upon your life, upon your ministry, upon your business, upon all that you do on every side. The Lord shall become supreme in you. Thank you, Jesus. But you have to remember that God is a spirit. What we are doing is a spiritual thing. Everything that has to be done in this kingdom must be done in the spirit. So we have to move on to the higher things and get into the things of the spirit and stay in the spirit because that is where we can be able to access the glory of God, access power, access the power of God and be able to flow in that place. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you today. If you are here, you have not received Jesus Christ. Whatever we said here will not make sense to you. You have to first come into the house. But the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. He said, he that must come to God first must believe. That's where I want you to come to now. If you have not received Jesus. Must believe that he is. 
and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says, if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ, which I want you to do now, and believe in our heart that he died and resurrected for our sins, we shall be saved. So say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and I believe that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Congratulations, you are saved. Look for a Bible-believing church. Connect with a man of God, a, a ministry, a pastor, a, a, a woman of God. It doesn't matter. I want you to grow in the faith. You need materials, right? Us, you want to join us in our fellowship. We are here every day at this time, Monday to Friday. But you can also visit us if you are in the Atlanta Metropolis. We are in up there in Gwinnett County, off of I-85 in Lebanon. Just connect with us and write to us. We are going to give you materials. But I want you to know that upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. You must be delivered and there shall be holiness. And the house of Israel shall possess their... Possession is the last thing. When you come, ask for deliverance first. Let deliverance happen in your life. Then you will see your life become whole again. God bless you. I love you all with all my heart. But above all, Jesus loves you the more. Have a blessed day. Amen.